Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another What's Preserving This Week video. I've decided I'm done canning green beans. I still have lots of green beans coming in, but as far as the canned green beans, this is my last batch because I still had a lot from 2019 canned up because we didn't eat very many, many of them through the year. I was being very tight with them because I wanted to wait till after I had a really good supply before I really started digging into them. But anyway, so I did another, what did I do here? I did another 10 jars of green beans fresh from the garden. And then, and if you're interested in how I did that, I did describe it in my last video that I will link to in the description box down below. And I explained how I actually did the prepping and the canning in there. And then the new thing I wanted to try, thanks to several of my subscribers that mentioned this, was canning some meatballs. So we had some family come out this last weekend and we had a lot of hamburger meat. We went ahead and just bought some, even though we have a ton in the freezer. We had to go to the store and get some other things and we saw some hamburger that was, you know, it was a decent hamburger and it was a dollar off a package. So we went ahead and bought four packages knowing we wouldn't use that much, but I wanted to have plenty ready to go. So half of it we turned into hamburger patties and then the rest I took and made meatballs out of it. So some of the meatballs I cooked up for Patrick that night with some gravy and I have a recipe on this. It might be kind of old, but I'll go ahead and link to that down below how I make my meatballs. The way I add my herbs and spices changes depending on how I feel at the time or the flavor I'm looking for. So I tried to keep these really kind of basic. I tried to make it so that they could go good in an Italian sauce, but also go good in a white gravy, which is mostly how they get eaten. It's a white gravy served over rice, and they can also be served over noodles. So I just went ahead and did it. Uh, I was going to try canning them without any kind of liquid in them all together, but I thought, well, I'll go ahead and put some liquid in. So I thawed out some of my turkey broth from a few years ago that I had frozen up and uh, poured a little bit of that in each jar and then topped it off with water. Now, as I was pretty sure I had done, I did overfill them <laughs> with the liquid. And so a lot of them will look kind of low, but that's okay. I've had this happen before. It doesn't hurt anything. The only thing that will happen to any of your exposed ingredients above the liquid is they can darken, but they won't spoil as long as your jar stays sealed. And all my jars sealed up well. As always, I've never had issues with my jar sealing when canning vegetables and fruits when it comes to Tatler. And then I usually like to go with the metal lids when I'm doing meat because I'm more likely for some reason to have them the tattlers fail on me when I'm canning meat I don't know why it shouldn't be any different but anyway no problems there every jar is sealed so the the plan is I can use the whatever's left as far as the liquid in here especially since some of it's turkey broth and the meatballs kind of made a little bit of broth on their own I can use that to make a gravy with or even add it to my white gravy for flavor I can add these to spaghetti sauce if I wanted to do spaghetti with meatballs at some point. And if I like this, I'll probably be doing more of this so I can help free up more space in my freezer. Or let's say something goes wrong with my freezer and it gives up. I'm not worried about power because we have our solar power. In the summertime, our public power is our backup if, if something ever goes wrong with the solar power. And in the wintertime, our solar is our backup if something goes wrong with the public power because that happens a lot. We have lots of power outages in the winter and we also have gas generators. So I see the most likely thing to happen with us is our freezer just breaks down and quits working. We've had that happen before. And if that happens, then I'm getting more ideas of things I could do with the hamburger meat so I don't have to have it all dehydrated as loose burger or whatever. Having pre-made meatballs, and some other people even recommended making a meatloaf. You just make your meatloaf and put it right in the jar and can it like that. And then you just take it out and you slice it up like that. So that's another way we can have pre-made meatloaf. So the, basically the concept is the same. It's just that for the meatballs, you want to brown them a little bit so that they don't stick together when you go to can. So as far as the beans go, coming back to these, what I'm going to do with the rest, because these are a great dual purpose bean, is that I will let the rest dry that so I can use them either for chili or I'll be saving for seeds for myself. Now, I'm not going to make any promises because my beans are very precious, 
but if I get enough dried beans saved up, I might put a few of them on the store. So these are all runner beans. There's three variety of runner beans. One is the Scarlet Runner and one is the Barnside Sweet Runner. Those both look very much the same. The only difference is the Barnside Sweet, uh, just the plant is bigger, the beans are a little bigger. And then the third one is the Sunset Runner, very much like the Scarlet Runner, just difference in color when it comes to the flowers. So the Sunset Runner has the nice peach colored flowers where the Scarlet and Barnside Sweet Runner have the deep orange flowers. So it just adds a lot of beauty to the garden and I just love them. They, they've been the one bean that I've been able to depend on out of all the many beans I've tried. Some that I've grown successfully one year, like the Purple Potted Pole beans usually grow really good for us. This year we're only just now starting to see some purple beans coming on the plants even though they were all planted at the same time but uh, anyway it, so that's what's happening that's why i really really like these beans it, it, because they they do really well for us in our cooler climate and just put out a lot i mean these are even though a lot of them didn't germinate this year because they're very cold spring and summer is still cold for summer even though only half of my plants germinated and are doing okay and the, even though they're behind i'm still getting quite a few beans off of them but it pays to plant those beans anywhere you have a place where they can climb anywhere and i'll plant them around fruit trees plant them around anything any kind of pole whatever you've got so today even though it's august 13th I finally picked my first zucchini. This is how weird our weather has been. Normally by this time, my zucchinis are starting to finish up. And I have, last year at this time, I had dehydrated tons of zucchini. I had cut a lot of it up and froze it into jars so I can use it for making my beef veggie bake which I did make the other night out of one that I pulled out of the freezer. And if you're interested, I did some videos last year of the many ways you can use zucchini. So you can uh, check that down below. I've used zucchini to make relishes and various other things. I've powdered it up and added it to breads. But, and then by this time last year, I had given away tons to family, friends, and neighbors and still had it coming in. And so far I only have one zucchini and it looks like my plants might be deciding they're done. So I don't know. I might get a few more. Hopefully we will. So I'm not sure if I'm going to cut this up and freeze it, if I'm going to dehydrate it, or if I'm just, since it's the only fresh zucchini we might get this year, I might just uh, use it right away on something. I do love fresh zucchini. And uh, if you check out that video, I'll be linking down below. I talk about our videos. I might put it, might be a couple different ones. Uh, some ways that I like to eat them fresh. And then as far as some other things I'm dehydrating, mostly it's been nasturtium flowers, calendula flowers, and thyme. So I just cut a whole bunch of thyme and I wanted to talk about this because I've been getting quite a few people asking about, you know, their thyme's gone to flower. So yes, some of my thyme got away from me even though I thought I was keeping up on it and a lot of it flowered. Yes, you can cut these and you can dehydrate them and use them. They are edible just like Pretty much any plant that I know of in the mint family, both the leaves and the flowers are edible. That includes lavender, oregano, sage, peppermint, catnip, and so on. And I have a video just on the benefits of thyme that I did, I think, last year that I'll link down below, as well as a video I did on mints in general. Uh, mostly your mints that with their minty flavor, like peppermint, spearmint, and so on. And I will link to that one down below as well. And then another question I recently got is, how do you get all the leaves off the stems? Well, I don't usually worry about it until they're fully dry. So once they're fully dry, then I just, it's really easy to strip the dried leaves off the stems. And if the stems are real fine, just break them up. You can add those to your spice too, as long as they're not too tough and you can break them up real small. And especially if you're going to use them in tea, it really doesn't matter. You can use stems from any kind of mint plants in your teas and they're just fine. And then another thing I wanted to mention was um, I've been starting to cut some of my yarrow to dry up for seed. So this is uh, to that point where it's they're about done. The flowers are pretty much finished. A lot of times you might notice even your white yarrow will turn kind of a purplish pink and that's when they're just they're finishing up they're about done and so what I do is I cut all the 
the flowers I try to get most of the stem off here and these I don't put in a pillowcase I usually dry them in those little food trays and as you can see in this picture right here of uh, I've got all these little food trays set on my dehydrator rack next to the wood stove we haven't had fires going it's not that cold but it still gives me a place where I can safely stack my little trays for some of the ones I don't want to dry that I've either uh, taken some of the seed out of the pillowcase and I'm putting them sorted them and I want them to finish drying in there or the things like the yarrow and some of my other ones where I'll just dry them right in the trays like that and kind of mix them around a little bit every day oh yes and I got a vinegar back there that I need to strain out that's one of my hair washing vinegars that one is, should be done and they and I have another one that should be done strawberry mead back here is just about finished so i'm going to be racking that pretty soon okay well i hope you enjoyed my video on what i'm preserving this week go ahead and share down below what you've got dehydrating canning or even freezing or whatever other ways that you're preserving food whether it be from your garden or things that you bought on sale whatever it is okay well thanks for watching take care and god bless